This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favourite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Okay, so if you're on this channel, you may or may not be aware that I use modelers for gigs and I have done since about 2015. So actually way before that, I don't know, I was using a Kemper in 2015, but before that I was using a Pod HD 500X. Before that I was using a Pod XD Live in four cable method. So anyway, I've got a fair amount of experience doing this stuff um, and I've made plenty of mistakes and had plenty of terrible gigs so I wanted to share my tips for kind of getting through a gig with a modeler. Now the first thing that I see people talking about that I think is possibly a little bit of a difficult way to approach doing this sort of thing is that they set up a preset per song. Myself personally and I think the majority or certainly most people I think that I'm aware of would actually set up uh, the minimum amount of presets that they could use for a gig I think. Now here's why. So first of all if you have a different preset per song you're going to find it very difficult I think to maintain changes across all of those presets unless you've got something clever like in the Axe FX with global blocks. The second thing is that your sound is potentially going to change drastically from song to song. Now that's not ideal for a sound person who at the best of times seem to struggle in the southwest. So consistency of sound is important uh, and especially if you've got in-ear mixes and stuff. Uh, I don't know if you've experienced this but on a gig oftentimes just things seem to just change by themselves. There's some sort of ghost in the uh, machine. So um, you know the second set maybe your sound check went fine the first set something changes in your ears and you go right well that needs fixing so you say or you go make that change and then second set everything's different again i can't imagine that having different presets per song is going to make your job any easier so when i look at a set list that i've got to do as i've got one i'm kind of looking at my preset as a thing that needs to cover kind of all of the bases so uh, I do see that I've got one song in here, Shut Up and Dance, which needs a specific type of delay sound, which I don't have in this preset yet. So I'm going to tackle that in a minute, and I'll just do that with you. Um, but aside from that, my job as a guitarist is to know the parts of these tunes, not necessarily have exactly the same guitar tone that was within each of these tunes. And I've never had anyone say, well, that's not exactly the right tone for... Taylor Swift shake it off. Um, do you know what I mean? Everyone else is worried about what they're doing. What you should probably be most focused on is playing the parts correctly and having a consistent sound that is not, you know, jumping in volume, is not hurting other people's ears, that sort of stuff. Another point, I guess, is that if you go and see a band live, you know, before this amp modeling stuff was a thing, um, and still now when people aren't using it, you don't change your amp and cab generally between songs, right? You're you're there even if it's like a big act uh, or someone with loads of gear like John Mayer or Joe Bonamassa, they're not changing their rig between songs, are they? It's a consistent sound through the night 
um, your drummer doesn't change their kit between songs, right? It's a consistent sound through the night. And that's the thing that I try to remember. And when people say I'm changing per song, that to me, I don't know, it just sounds to me like that's a lot of work for minimal kind of results, I think. So for me, I set up like a master preset that is gonna cover all of the bases that I need for the gig. If I can't do it in one, then maybe I would set up another preset. You know, if I needed, I don't know, pitch effects on one or something, then I might have another preset that goes below that uh, or next to it and then bring in those other effects that I might need for that one song. Another thing to keep in mind is that you wanna keep it simple if you're gigging live with this stuff. If you've come from using pedal boards, using amps, then for sure the modeling is going to be a whole different thing as one thing using at home when the light is okay and when you can get up close in person with the unit it's another thing using it when you're in the middle of a gig uh, someone's just bailed on mustang sally the bride's mother is uh, screaming at you because you fucked up the solo to robbie williams's angels do you know what i mean like there's there's stuff flying around the room i think a good approach to try and keep your preset simple um, this is why I've tried to have minimal kind of snapshot changes in mind because um, digging into the menus and like thinking, right, well, this snapshot goes here. If I make this change, what happens? Try and keep it simple and try and keep your signal chain relatively simple so that you're not super confused. And so, you know, if you find that you need to boost your solo or you need to change your levels or whatever, it's not going to be a 10 minute job. It's, it needs to be sort of like a, right, I just quickly do this. So you could do it in the sound check or you could do it in the middle of a gig. Maybe you even practice making that sort of change. So what sort of change might you need to make? So here's another kind of tip that I've got. You need to try playing your clean as loud as you play. Um, so for instance, if you're playing like funky stuff, um, you're potentially going to have quite a hard snappy attack. And then you want to match your rhythm tone off of that. So generally, if you bring in your rhythm tone, at the same perceived volume as your clean tone, what will happen live is that your dirty tones will sound quieter than your clean tones, is what I've generally found because you tend to play a little bit louder. And when you're playing a snappy clean tone, it won't compress. When you play a really distorted tone, it will compress. So what you wanna find is play your clean the loudest that you're gonna play it, and then build your rhythm tone, uh, if it's a driven rhythm tone, to be slightly sort of on par with the loudest part of your clean playing or slightly louder than and then your solo tone again i would set to be a bit louder than your rhythm tone you want to try and have this effect where your clean is where it's at your rhythm tone is slightly louder just to allow for when you're playing sort of snappy loud clean stuff that you're not going to have a volume dip when you come to your rhythm and then your lead tone I think this is a thing to not be too shy about. You want to be a little bit louder than your rhythm, you know, maybe a dB, a couple of dB, maybe jump outside the front of the house and, and try this if you can. Um, but also there's nothing worse than this happens so much than uh, I think lead tones that are just a little bit too quiet. So you've got this guy sort of shredding away to three people in the front row and the bride's mum and then you know they can't hear your sweet picking it's a bit of a thing those would be my tips keep it simple try and have like a master preset or maybe at, at most two or three that you use for an entire gig so you've got that consistency of sound learn to use the unit so that you can make the kind of changes that you might need to make your clean might need to be a bit louder your solo might need to come up a bit your rhythm tone might be too overpowering you might need to bring it down a little bit um, just these little tweaks and stuff. Maybe you've got too much delay on your solo tone, so maybe you bring that down. It's also a really, really good idea, I think, to have your delay mix on an expression pedal, sort of like Andy Timmons. I think that works really well. Um, but those would be my tips. So I'm now looking at this set list, and I can see that one song, Shut Up and Dance, I don't have a delay programmed for that yet, so I'm just gonna jump in and do that. You probably want, I think, to have some amount of stage volume on stage. I've done other videos about why I don't use FR, FRs. I tend to use like the return of an amp or um, something with a real guitar cab, just so that I don't have the tweeter doing the 
high-end stuff that to me doesn't sound very guitaristy. But especially if you're coming from an amp and a cab, you probably don't want to jump straight into going full modeler, I don't think, because it's going to be a massive shift in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts on all of this and what you like to do live. Maybe you're a person who does programming song by song stuff. But for me, for instance, if I've got, you know, 40 songs to play, I'm looking for a consistent preset that can sound good for all of this material rather than going in programming song by song. Personally, it'd be too much work and I'm not a keyboard player. So I've got my preset here. So what I've got along here, I have my snapshots. This one's clean, this one's solo, this one's rhythm. So I've got my clean. Okay, so it's going to just be a, a kind of versatile thing that could do funk if I want a, a phaser. I've got a drive that I can add for a bit of a mid. Kind of gain stage and I can add this delay if needed. I've got my rhythm tone here. And what I'm saying is you want to balance, what I'm saying is you want to balance between these. So you're not, you know, in the middle of playing Teenage Dirtbag and you get to the chorus and you're suddenly going from. You want like a, a good healthy. Relationship between the clean and the overdrive tones and then between your rhythm and your Now one thing that I don't have going on here yet. I haven't yet set my mix to be controlled by the expression pedal so I like to keep my mixes around sort of between 20 and 25 percent um, so what I'm going to do is set up here my expression to control uh, the delay and to go between sort of 0 and 30 so set up the right mix expression 2 0 and 30 so that I can blend in that delay with the expression pedal if needed um, I might also set this up to be with two different presets so that if I don't have an expression pedal for a gig for whatever reason I'm not then going to be stuck because again making little changes to these types of little tweaks are kind of difficult in the heat of battle the other thing that I'm going to need for this gig is in Shut Up and Dance I need like a dotted rhythm so I think actually what I might do is just set this up to be a quarter eight dotted. Like that, and then it's assigned to my tap. Um, that's probably the easiest way to achieve this. Um, so then, yeah, that probably be the best way to do it. Something like that. So now I've got everything I need for the actual gig um, and I've got a relatively simple preset. I've got a, a drive pedal up front, a phaser, my clean amp, my dirty amp, my cab and my delay. Try and keep it simple so that if you need to make changes you can. And then I've got my delay that I can mix in and out with the expression pedal, which is really handy stuff. I'll catch you in another video soon. Let me know if you want me to drop this into the folder. Oh, one other thing. If you 
go here snapshot edits I'd set to discard for an actual gig so that you can be confident that next time you go to your drive or your rhythm if you've turned on your delay the next time you come back to it it will be as you left it if that makes sense cheers for now